friends and family, welcome to Phonetic Friday. Today's episode of Phonetic Friday is going to be Fulfillment Friday. We're going to fulfill a request. We've had many requests to do a snake room tour, so that's what we're going to do. But before we get started on this tour, I'd like to know from you guys, what is your dream snake room? What, how big is it? How many snakes are in it? What kinds of snakes are in it? Leave a comment down below and let me know. I'm curious. Maybe let me know if you think that having a room dedicated to snakes is insane. Maybe that's some crazy idea to you that you've never thought anybody would ever imagine doing. Obviously, we've done it. Let me know. Comment down below, please. I think the best thing to start out with, since we're doing a snake room tour, is gonna to be to show you a snake. And this is the snake that I promised I would show you on Triple B TV on Wednesday, because she was in shed. This is Lucy, our fire clown female. And she's a big girl, and she just had a fresh shed. And yeah, there she goes, as promised. What's up, baby? She's a beautiful snake. She's producing beautiful babies for us, and She's huge! I'm, I'm hoping that she's gonna be laying some uh, eggs soon, but she doesn't even, she's barely even building follicles, so that's a ways out. But she's a big girl. I imagine that once she goes, we're gonna be seeing quite the large clutch from her. That would be my guess. So let's start with the first feature of the snake room that I am a big fan of. <laughs> no pun intended. This fan for me is like the centerpiece of the room and it circulates the air, which is something that's very important for maintaining proper temperatures in the snake room. So what I actually have it doing is pulling air up. It's, it's going in a reverse mode. You can see the blades are pointed this way and it's spinning that way. So it's pulling air up from the center of the room and pushing it down the backs and the sides. If you turn that fan on high and you stand over here in the back of the room, in any of the corners, you'll feel air pushing down from the ceiling down. And the reason that's important is because all of these racks have heat in the back of them. And so the heat is trying to rise up through the back and this fan is keeping it pushing down this way and circulating it so we have an even temperature both on the floor and the ceiling of the room. Very important. And in the winter time, we kick on this bad boy. Funny thing is, rarely even have to use this. I'm curious to see, since we have these extra added racks in here now, if this next coming winter, this thing's even gonna kick on. Because even this past winter, it barely did, and we didn't have all these other racks in here. So, it'll be interesting to see if this room even needs this oil-filled radiant heater, which I will just put over here in the center. That runs off one of these Ranko thermostats right back there. That's actually hooked into our, our wall system. And it goes right up there, probe hangs right down there, and whenever it drops below 77 degrees in this room, kicks that thing on. Again, curious to see if that's gonna happen. Since we're talking about ambient room temperature, we might as well focus on the old trip light air conditioning unit. And that is also hooked up to a Ranko thermostat with this probe. And anytime it gets above 80 degrees in this room, that air conditioner kicks on and we cool the room down. Ah, one thing that many snake rooms, almost any other snake room in the world, I guarantee does not have a Noah Sage and an Eli Scrimmins. This is the only snake room in the world that comes equipped with these crazy snake monkeys right here. <laughs> hey, hey, no, hey Noah, what? Do you know? I know. Slapping. Slapping? Really? All the stuff you've learned this week and you want to you talk about slapping? I, I mean, I mean, geckos. Geckos? Yeah. What about geckos? That they can't floss. They can't? You can see them. And Either that's a lizard or a gecko. That's a lizard. <laughs> and geckos are lizards. Huh? Geckos are lizards. But diff, diff. The lizards we see can't camouflage and the ones that are in Hawaii can't camouflage. That doesn't mean they're not lizards. <laughs> that's I know. <laughs> hey, Eli. What do you know? I know. Snakes. What about snakes? Gecko. <laughs> what? 
tiny. They're tiny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else? Nothing else. I don't know anything. I want to hold Mr. Pink. <laughs> okay, but you can hold Mr. Pink. We're showing people the snake room, so how about we show the snake room and then we'll pull some snakes out and handle them, okay? Sound good? Yeah. Cool. We covered the ambient temperature. Oh, the sink. If you have the opportunity to put a sink in your snake room, this thing is one of the best ones, I think. It's a Model 28. It's a musty, it's a plastic sink. Very, very easy to install. I ended up putting it up higher on these blocks down here. The existing plumbing in the wall was a bit higher up already, so I, I raised the sink up so that it could handle that. And it's just the perfect size. I mean, you can take, you can take one of these FB70 tubs and it fits right in there for cleaning. So it's, it's a sweet height. I can just sit here and, and work on stuff and clean stuff. And man, I really, I don't know what I would do if I did not have a sink in my snake room. Noah here is featuring something that I don't necessarily want to have in my snake room, but I do, of course. This is my computer office area. It's where I edit all the videos, where I edit Triple B TV, and uh, well, not all of it. But... Yay, I'm a spoonie! I guess my dream snake room would not have an office in it, but it is, it is convenient, I guess, to be right there. But, again, sometimes I don't want to be working in 80 degree temperatures. <laughs> Check out this thing I just added. I guess I should have that on right now, huh? Daddy, what is that? That's a recording sign. It lets everybody know that we are recording. This is a rack made by Herptastic. And the great thing about this rack is that you can put three different size tubs in here. You can put the, the wider tubs, the smaller tubs you can put in here. You can put three on each row. And those size tubs are great for starting ball python hatchlings and making them feel very comfortable. And this is a rack that I had made by my buddy Shannon Smith and it's got the FB90 tubs in there. Pretty sweet, it's got the windows, you can keep a variety of species in it. I mean, it just depends on, uh, depends on the size. It's, it's a cool size because there's a lot of grow ups in here, there's a lot of snakes in here that are not going to spend their life in here. Um, at one point I'm hoping to take the carpet and the scrub pythons and put them over here where my incubator is now and move that stuff over there and have three kind of arboreal cages stacked here so they can do their full climb thing. And that's in the plans for the future. Since we're talking about the incubator, might as well. It's a simple mini fridge that's been converted. You know, it's had the, removed the Freon, put some heat tape in the back, put a fan up there. My buddy Jake actually made it over at Silent Serpents. And uh, he passed it on to me because he upgraded his and this thing has done great. We've We've had a great success using this incubator, and I, I personally think that a, a used fridge is the best way to make an incubator. They're already well insulated, got a glass front so you don't have to open it to check on eggs, and it's great. And behind me here is the master of racks. This thing. The, the, the versatility of this Freedom Reader Rack, I could not talk about enough. I mean, having these trays to work on are, are fantastic. Being able to stack these 665s with the 1030s, with the 1040s, with the 1575, all in one rack, it's, it's amazing. I, this is like, this is a dream setup right here for me. And plus with the thermostats, the Freedom Reader thermostats on top that are clipped in with clips, very, very convenient. They work very well and I kind of dreamed this up and it's here it is. There's a lot of actually cool things coming this next year with Freedom Breeders, stuff that's going to really change the game. That's one of my favorite things about these guys is they're always improving and making improvements to make things better and you just wait till you see what's coming out next year. It's going to be, it's going to change everything, seriously. My security camera, very, very crucial so that I know what's going on in here when I'm not here. Um, whether it's having Jalen over to clean, I can kind of help him out because I can actually talk to people through those security cameras and I get a little alert anytime they see motion. Save worst case scenario, you know, somebody accidentally leaves a tub open and a snake gets out, I can look back in the footage and track it and see where that snake actually went to. I've had to do that before. Another thing that I never could have ever imagined living without is these 
Reptile Guardians. You can find them at reptileguardian.com. They basically send you a text message anytime the sensor or the probe goes out of the parameters you set and you can set the ambient temperature, the hot spot temperature, and the ambient humidity. And if it goes outside of your parameters, you'll get a text message immediately that tells you, hey, something's out of whack, and you can go check on it. I honestly, I don't know how I ever left my house without those things before. I'm trying to move along so because there's a lot of stuff in this room that I wanna, I wanna cover in this video without making it too long. Over here, of course, we've got my stack of random stuff. This is basically where I keep all my filming and camera equipment. Again, it would be nice to not keep this in the snake room, but for now, it, it is it does work. But I very well may move it out so I can put more caging. <laughs> These are the Serpentine Obsessions enclosures, and they're eight foot by three foot. And the great thing about them is you got this divider. So if you snake dirty up just one side of the cage, you just want to clean up that one side and not have the snake bother you on the other side, you just slide this thing in there. If you got a really crazy snake that you think might want to take your hand off, you can use this to help move it from side, clean one side, pull out the divider, usher the snake to the other side, put the divider back in, clean the other side. Very convenient, very awesome feature. People always ask about the lights too. So I put these lights in on my own. This is basically an LED strip that you can get at Home Depot. And the great thing about it is it's waterproof. And I like to put it on the front here so that it shines back onto the snake, especially for video and photography purposes. Um, these come with lights in the back, which I just, I don't like for, uh, they don't like the way it looks for on camera and whatnot, so I made this my own little custom thing, and pretty happy with it. I customize these cages a lot. I put this perch in here so that the, the snakes have more surface area to cruise around. Um, really happy with how these turned out. So I, I built the snake room with my with my bare hands, put in all the lighting, made it so you can fade the lights down and brighten them way up and have them on both sides and the, my idea was to have it so the video was good so I have good lighting coming from both sides that side and it works it works I'm, I'm really happy with it the cart this cart because of these awesome shelves on the Freedom Breeder racks I almost thought about getting rid of the cart because it became almost obsolete but it's really not and I think I'll always have the cart and keep the cart. I had always wanted these for the longest time. I finally got one. Not getting rid of it now. I just keep my, uh, you know, my spray bottles on there. Keep the extra deli cups. Hang my disinfectants. Keep the water thing for filling up waters. Have the random tools, scraper, feeding tongs, and of course the scale for keeping track of ball, ball python weights. Paper towels. It's great. It's a great thing. I highly recommend if you have the space. Four cart, I highly recommend one. Are you guys tearing apart my chair in here? Yeah, I did it. And this is, this is more, this is more wishful thinking. Oh, there's one other thing I didn't talk about here, and that's these little bags of lava rock that you can get at Home Depot, and they basically, they absorb odor, and they work really well. I don't really, it never really smells bad in here. It always smells good in here. Of course, unless I'm one of the debris ticks, destroys their enclosure. And then I clean it, and it's good again. And uh, another thing, see there's so many things in here that I'm gonna keep forgetting. The humidifier. This is hooked up to a Herbstat, and the Herbstat has a humidity probe up here, and anytime the humidity drops below 55% in the room, kicks on the evaporative humidifier, and it circulates around the room, and we, we keep a good ambient humidity in here as well. I've covered just about everything, and you boys you boys want to hold some snakes? Yeah. Uh-huh. Daddy? What's up, my guy? How do you paint the wall green? Oh yeah, I didn't mention that either. <laughs> when am I gonna paint that wall green? I've got lots of things that I want to do in this room, Lots of things that I want to do outside the room. Lots of things that I want to accomplish. And I'm kind of waiting to paint this wall until I've accomplished those things. So I know that once this wall is painted, I've really gotten everything done I want to do. Like finishing my website. <laughs> oh, someday. I want to hold a snakey, Daddy. You want to hold a snakey? You want to hold Mr. Pink? Yeah, he's my favorite. <sighs> Billy so. <laughs>
I hope you guys enjoyed this snake room tour. Obviously it was a tour of the snake room itself and not really so much the snakes, but we will do one of those too. We'll go through every single snake here. We're gonna have to go through them quickly because there's a lot of snakes, but <laughs> we'll do that. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for joining us for this Phonetic Friday and we'll see you on Music Monday. Y'all take care. <laughs> I want you to see me doing Okay, one sec. <laughs> Your daddy makes a loud noise.